Now I'm going to talk about survival rate. Uh, the American Cancer Society relies on information from the CIRL database maintained by the National Cancer Institute NCI, to provide survival statistics for different types of cancer. The CIRL database tracks five-year relative survival rates for thyroid cancer in the United States based on how far the cancer has spread. The CIRL database, however, does not group cancers by AJCC, TNM stages, for example, stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, etc. The CIRL data, uh, instead, it groups cancers into localized, regional, and distant stages. So, usually, there are three stages. First one is localized stage. Uh, this stage indicates there is no sign that the cancer has spread outside of the thyroid. The regional stage, this, is, this means the cancer has spread outside of the thyroid to nearby structures. The last one is the distant stage. The cancer has spread to distant parts of the body, such as bones. So, the 5 years relative survival rate in the U.S. for papillary thyroid cancer is as follows. The localized stage, and the 5 year relative survival rate is near 100%. As for the regional stage, it is 99%. But for the distant stage, it is 78%. Uh, this data is, is based on people diagnosed with thyroid cancer between 2009 and 2015. And I'm going to talk about the early detection. Many cases of thyroid cancer can be found early. In fact, most thyroid cancers are now found much earlier than in the past and can be treated successfully. Most early thyroid cancers are found when patients see their doctors because of neck lumps or nodules they noticed. If anyone has unusual symptoms such as a lump or swelling in one's neck, he or she should see a doctor right away. However, there is no clinical evidence to support blood tests or thyroid ultrasound for the general population so they are not recommended as a screening test for thyroid cancer. Even though a suspicious malignant thyroid nodule is found in thyroid thyroid gland, if its size is less than 5 mm, generally no treatment is recommended. A follow-up thyroid ultrasound of 6 to 1 year 6 months to 1 year for the lesion is recommended. Uh, I have to uh, explain the SEER. SEER means Surveillance, Epidemiology and End Research Program. So this uh, SEER program provides information on cancer statistics in an effort to reduce the cancer burden among the US population. Okay, now I'm going to talk about stomach cancer. The figure shows the anatomy of the stomach and surrounding organs. Okay, uh, the first one, the first uh, GI tract is esophagus, uh, when you swallow food. Then the second one is stomach, and then small intestines and the large intestine uh, starts from the cecum so ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon, and rectum and the anus and the surrounding organs are liver, 
gallbladder. So after food is chewed and swallowed, it enters the esophagus, a tube that carries food through the neck and chest to the stomach. The esophagus joins the stomach at the gastroesophageal junction, which is also called G junction, uh, which is just beneath the diaphragm. The thin sheet of breathing muscle under the lungs. The stomach is a sac-like organ that holds food and starts to digest it by secreting gastric juice. The food and gastric juice are mixed and then emptied into the first part of the small intestine called the duodenum. There are uh, five parts of the stomach. As you can see here, the initial part of the stomach is called the cardia and the second one is fundus and body, antrum and the pylorus. The cardia is the first portion, uh, which is closest to the esophagus. The fundus is the upper part of the stomach next to the cardia. The body part, which is also called corpus, is the main part of the stomach between the upper and lower parts. The antrum is the lower portion near the intestine, uh, where the food is mixed with gastric juice. Last part is the pylorus. This is the last part of the stomach, which acts as a valve to control emptying of the stomach contents into the small intestine. And also, we can divide the stomach to three parts. Proximal stomach, distal stomach, and the less curvature and greater curvature. Uh, the proximal stomach is the first three parts of the stomach, as I mentioned before, cardia, fundus, and body. Some cells in these parts of the stomach make acid and pepsin. Uh, pepsin is a digestive enzyme. The parts of the gastric juice that help to digest food. They also make a protein called the intrinsic factor, which the body needs to absorb vitamin B12. And also the distal stomach uh, includes the lower two parts, antrum and pylorus. And also you can see the curvatures, lesser curvature and greater curvature. These two covers form its inner and outer borders respectively. There are five layers of the stomach, from the inner to outer layers. Remember these ones, mucosa, submucosa, muscularis propria, subserosa, and serosa. Here, in the figure, you can see the mucosa submucosa, muscularis propria, subserosa, and serosa. The mucosa inner, uh, is the innermost layer. Stomach acid and digestive enzymes are made. Most stomach cancers start in this layer. And submucosa is the supporting layer. And muscularis propria is a thick layer of muscle that moves and mixes the stomach contents. And also subserosa and serosa wrap the stomach. The layers are important in determining the stage of the cancer and in helping to determine a person's prognosis. As a cancer grows from the mucosa into deeper layers, the stage becomes more advanced and the prognosis is not as good. Now I'm going to talk about the development of stomach cancer. Uh, stomach cancer tends to develop slowly over many years. Before a true cancer develops, precancerous changes often occur in the inner lining, 
bir koca of the stomach. And these rarely cause symptoms and therefore often go undetected. Cancers starting in different sections of the stomach may cause different symptoms and tend to have different outcomes. Also, there is this concept, metastasis. Stomach cancer can spread in different ways, grow through the wall of the stomach and invade nearby organs. Stomach cancer can also spread to the lymph vessels and nearby lymph nodes. Lymph nodes are bean-sized bean structures that help fight infections. The stomach has a very rich network of lymph vessels and nodes. As more advanced, it can travel through the bloodstream and spread to organs such as the liver, lungs, and bones. If cancer has spread to the lymph nodes or to other organs, the patient's outlook prognosis is not as good. There are several types for stomach cancer. First one is adenocarcinoma. This accounts for about 90% to 95% of stomach cancers. Adenocarcinoma develops from the cells that form the innermost lining of the stomach, which is mucosa. And also, there are several types of stomach cancer. Lymphoma, uh, which is about 4% of stomach cancers. Cancers of the immune system tissue that are sometimes found in the wall of the stomach are lymphomas. GIST, G-I-S-T, gastrointestinal stromal tumor. These are rare tumors that start in very early forms of cells in the wall of the stomach called the interstitial cells of Kajar. Uh, these can be non-cancerous, means benign, and also cancerous. Most gists are found in the stomach. And also, there is carcinoid tumor, which is about 3% of stomach cancers. These are tumors that start in hormone-making cells of the stomach. Most carcinoid tumors do not spread to other organs. And also, there are other very rare cancers, such as squamous cell carcinoma, small cell carcinoma, and leiomyosarcoma. And now, let's see the key statistics in the U.S. The five-year relative survival rate is 32%. So, which is uh, quite less than in Korea because the prevalence and incidence of stomach cancer are very low, lower um, compared to Korea. And in Korea, in 2017, there are 29,000 new cases uh, are, were reported and the stomach cancer is ranked first in Korea. So the number of new cases per 100,000 people is 57.9. In men, stomach cancer is ranked first and women uh, stomach cancer is ranked first. Now I'm going to talk about the etiology of stomach cancer, causes for stomach cancer. There are several changes thought to be precancerous. The most important one is chronic atrophic gastritis. The normal glands of the stomach are either decreased or absent. Also, some, there can be some degree of inflammation. The stomach cells are damaged by cells of the immune system. And also, it is often caused by H. pylori infection, Helicobacter pylori infection. This can also be 
caused by an autoimmune reaction, in which a person's immune system attacks the cells lining the stomach. So, the chronic atrophic gastritis is very important uh, precancerous lesion. And second one is intestinal metaplasia. The normal lining of the stomach is replaced with cells that closely resemble the cells that usually line the intestine. Intestinal metaplasia usually has chronic atrophic gastritis as well. And also some foods can cause uh, stomach cancer. For instance, Helicobacter pylori bacteria can convert to substances in some foods into chemicals that cause mutations in the DNA of the cells in the stomach lining. This may also explain why certain foods such as preserved meats increase a person's risk for stomach cancer. On the other hand, some of the foods that might lower stomach cancer risk, such as fruits and vegetables, contain antioxidants that can block substances that damage a cell's DNA. Also, oncogenes help cells grow and divide into new cells. Tumor suppressor genes slow down cell division, so cause cells to die at the right time, or have fixed DNA damage are called. Cancers can be caused by DNA changes that turn on oncogenes or turn off tumor suppressor genes. Inherited mutations in some genes can cause stomach cancer. As explained in the section, can increase a person's stomach cancer risk, only a small percentage of stomach cancers. There are several risk factors for stomach cancer. Stomach cancer is more common in men than in women. In Korea, the ratio is 2 to 1. AG, a sharp increase in stomach cancer rate in people over the age of 50 can be found. In the United States, stomach cancer is more common in Hispanic Americans, African Americans, and Asian Pacific Islanders than it is in non-Hispanic whites. And geographically, worldwide, stomach cancer is more common in Japan, Korea, China, Southern and Eastern Europe and South and Central America. It is less common in Northern and Western Africa, South Central Asia, and North America. Helicobacter pylori infection seems to be a major cause of stomach cancer, especially cancers in the lower, distal part of the stomach. Long-term infection of the stomach with this germ may lead to inflammation, which is called chronic atrophic gastritis. People with stomach cancer have a higher rate of H. pylori infection than people without this cancer. This is also linked to some types of lymphoma of the stomach. Even so, most people who carry this germ in their stomach never develop cancer. And also other risk factors mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue lymphoma, which is called multi-lymphoma. This has an increased risk of getting adenocarcinoma of the stomach, probably because multi-lymphoma of the stomach is caused by infection with H. pylori bacteria. As for diet, an increased risk of stomach cancer in people with diets that have a large amount of smoked foods, salted fish and meat, and pickled vegetables is found. And also, nitrates and nitrites, uh, which are commonly found in cured meats, can be converted by certain bacteria such as H. pylori 
into compounds that have been shown to cause stomach cancer in lab animals. On the other hand, eating lots of fresh foods and vegetables appears to lower the risk of stomach cancer. And also, smoking, tobacco use increases stomach cancer risk, particularly for cancers of the upper portion of the stomach near the esophagus. Obesity or being overweight might be a possible cause of cancers of the cardia. And also there are other risk factors like a family history of stomach cancer, previous stomach surgery, pernicious anemia, and etc. There are several symptoms and signs. Since symptoms of stomach cancer often do not appear until the disease is advanced, symptoms or signs are poor appetite, weight loss, abdominal pain, vague discomfort in the abdomen, usually above the umbilicus, a sense of fullness in the upper abdomen after eating a small meal, heartburn or indigestion, nausea, vomiting with or without blood, swelling or fluid buildup in the abdomen, and low red cell count, which is called anemia, due to bleeding. And as for the EGC, which is early gastro cancer, mostly there is no symptom and it is incidentally found on gastroscopy. Maybe FPS3 sonus can be found. But as for AGC, advanced gastric cancer, this is usually uh, also there is no symptom, but weight loss is very common, 60%. And abdominal pain, nausea and vomiting, anorexia, dysphagia, and gastrointestinal bleeding can develop. This figure shows the gastroscopy uh, for diagnosing stomach cancer we can use uh, gastroscopy. The first one is the upper endoscopy, which is also called esophagogastroduodenoscopy or EGD or gastroscopy. Uh, gastroscopy is the main test used to find the stomach cancer. During this test, the doctor passes an endoscope, which is a thin flexible lighted tube with a small video camera on the end down your throat. During this process, this procedure, the doctor examines the gross shape. This lets the doctor see the lining of your esophagus, stomach, and the first part of the small intestine. And then, if abnormal areas are seen during gastroscopy, biopsies can be taken using instruments passed through the endoscope. And finally, the tissue samples are sent to a lab where they are looked at under a microscope to see if cancer cells are present. And also there is another diagnostic tool, which is called UGI, Upper Gastrointestinal Series, or Upper Gastrointestinal oh, okay. Upper Gastrointestinal Series, which is UGI. This is an X-ray test to look at the inner lining of the esophagus, stomach, and the first part of the small intestine. UGI is used less often than endoscopy, gastroscopy, as it may miss some abnormal areas and does not allow the doctor 
to take biopsy samples, but it is less invasive than endoscopy. The procedure is as follows. The patient drinks a white chalk solution containing a substance called barium. The barium coats the lining of the esophagus, stomach, and small intestine. Several x-ray pictures are then taken because x-rays can pass through the coating of barium. This will outline any abnormalities of the lining of these organs. And a double contrast technique may be used to look for early stomach cancer. After the barium solution is swallowed, a thin tube is passed into the stomach and the air is pumped in. This makes the barium coating very thin, so even small abnormalities will show up. So, which is called a double contrast technique, barium and air. And also, we can uh, perform the endoscopic ultrasound, which is called EUS. This uses sound waves to produce images of the stomach. As for the procedure, a small transducer is placed on the tip of an endoscope. The endoscope lets the transducer rest directly on the wall of the stomach where the cancer is. It lets the doctor look at the layers of the stomach wall as well as the nearby lymph nodes and other structures just outside the stomach. EUS is most useful in seeing how far a cancer may have spread into the wall of the stomach to nearby tissues and to nearby lymph nodes. It can also be used to help guide a needle into a suspicious area to get a tissue sample, which is called EUS-guided needle biopsy. Also, EUS is used for studying sub-epithelial tumors, which is SET, like GIST, gastrointestinal tumors. This figure shows the procedure of the endoscopic ultrasound. Now I'm going to talk about staging of stomach cancer. First, the staging of the early gastric cancer. If the gastric adenocarcinoma is confined to the mucosa and the submucosa of the stomach, which means there is no invasion to muscularis propria uh, with or without regional lymph node metastasis. This is called early gastric cancer. So the important point is that this cancer uh, does not invade to the muscularis propria layer. So uh, if we use the TNM staging, T1 and any N. Each accounts for 15 to 57% of incident gastric cancer, depending upon the geographic region. The early gastric cancer, EGC, has a good prognosis. So the five year survival rate are 99% when limited to the mucosa and 96% when the submucosa is embedded. And this EGC can be classified into several subtypes. Uh, type 1, protruded type, like this. And type 2, superficial type. Among the superficial type, there are three subtypes, 2A, 2B, 2C. 2A is a superficial elevated, 2B is the superficial flat, 2C is the superficial depressed. And lastly, type 3 is excavated type. This is the Japanese macroscopic classifications. And now I'm going to talk about ages. Advanced gastric cancer is the invasive gastric adenocarcinoma, which penetrates the submucosa of the stomach and invades the muscularis propria. This has a pro 
poor prognosis. Uh, regarding the types of agency, we usually use Bormann's classification. Bormann type 1, 2, 3, 4. Bormann 1 is polypoid. 2 is the fungating, ulcerated with raised margins. Bormann 3, ulcerated with poorly defined infiltrative margins. Lastly, Bormann type 4, infiltrative, predominantly intramural lesion and poorly demarcated. Now I'm going to talk about the staging, TNM staging. First, T categories. T0 means no signs of a main tumor can be found. TIS, IS means carcinoma in situ. Uh, in situ means uh, it stays uh, in the origin of cancer. Cancer cells are only in the top layer of cells of the mucosa and they have not grown into deeper layers of tissue such as the lamina propria or muscularis mucosa. So this stage is also known as carcinoma in situ. T1, in this stage, the tumor has grown from the top layer of cells of the mucosa into the next layers below such as the lamina propria the muscularis mucosa, also mucosa. And also, T1 can be uh, divided into two subtypes, T1A and T1B. And also T2. In T2, the tumor is growing into the muscularis propria layer. And if the tumor is growing into the sub layer, it is called T3. T4, the tumor has grown into the serosa and may be growing into a nearby organ or other structures such as major blood vessels. T4 also can be uh, divided into two types, T4A and T4B. And N categories of stomach cancer. N0, uh, there is no spread to nearby lymph nodes. N1, the cancer has spread to one to two nearby lymph nodes. N2, 3 to 6 nearby lymph nodes, N3, 7 or more nearby lymph nodes, and so on. And as for M categories of stomach cancer, M1 is the distant metastasis. So by uh, combining these T and M stage classifications, we can make a final staging for the gastric cancer like this. Stage 0 means TIS, carcinoma in situ. And stage 1, AB, 2, AB, 3, ABC, and 4 by a combination of TNM stagings. Now I'm going to talk about the treatment for stomach cancer. There are several types of doctors on stomach cancer. Oh, this is an error, not thyroid, but stomach cancer. A gastroenterologist is a doctor who specializes in treatment of diseases of the digestive system. A surgical oncology is a doctor who treats cancer with surgery. A medical oncologist is a doctor who treats cancer with medicines such as chemotherapy. A radiation oncologist is a doctor who treats cancer with radiation therapy. Uh, as for the treatment of stomach cancer, we can uh, select several treatment options by the type and stage of uh, stomach cancer. For example, surgery, chemotherapy, targeted therapy, and radiation therapy. Usually, two or more of these are combined. Surgery is the main part of the treatment for stomach cancer. If a patient has a stage 0, 1, 2, or 3 cancer and is healthy enough, surgery offers the only realistic chance for cure at this time. 
There are several types of surgery. Endoscopic resection. The most important one is EMR, endoscopic mucosal resection, and also endoscopic submucosal resection. These can be used only to treat some very early stage cancers, where the chance of spread to the lymph nodes is very low. These procedures do not require a cut incision in the skin. Instead, the surgeon passes an endoscope down the throat and into the stomach. Surgical tools can be passed through the endoscope to remove the, the tumor and part of the normal stomach wall around it. These are not done as much in the United States as they are in countries like Korea and Japan, where stomach cancer is more common and more often found at an early stage due to screening. This figure shows the main types of surgery for stomach cancer, bill rows 1 and 2. The left shows the bill 1 surgery. This is a gastro duodenal stomach. This involves the partial gastrectomy or removal of the antrum and the pylorus of stomach and with anastomosis of the gastric stump to the duodenum. So this is called gastro duodenal stomy. But on the contrary, below 2, this is called gastro jejunal stomy. This involves the partial gastrectomy or removal of the antrum and pylorus of stomach. So this is the same as uh, plus one, but the difference is that this uh, uses an anastomosis of the gastric stump to the duodenum, uh, jejunum, not duodenum. So plus one, gastro duodenostomy. Plus two, gastro jejunostomy. And also, uh, the doctor can uh, conduct total gastrectomy. Uh, the most uh, famous one is Guan Y procedure. The total gastrectomy is used for tumors in the middle or upper part of the stomach. Total gastrectomy removes the whole stomach, the lower part of the esophagus and the first part of the duodenum and part or all of any nearby organs such as the pancreas, spleen or liver where the stomach tumor has spread and the lymph nodes in the area around the stomach near the area of the tumor and then it is reconstructed. The remaining part of the duodenum is uh, separated from the jejunum while still attached to the bile duct from the liver and the pancreatic duct from the pancreas. The jejunum is connected to the remaining of the esophagus. The remaining uh, duodenum is connected further down the jejunum from where the esophagus and jejunum are attached. So this is called, uh, from the shape, Ruan Y procedure. This allows the bile and pancreatic juices to enter the digestive system without harming the remaining esophagus. The five-year relative survival rate in the US for stomach cancer is shown in this table. For the localized stage, the five-year five relative survival rate is 69%. As for regional, 31%. As for distant, 5%.
Screening is testing for diseases such as cancer in people without symptoms in countries such as Korea and Japan, where stomach cancer is very common. Mass screening of the population has helped find many cases at an early curable stage. In Korea, gastroscopy or upper gastrointestinal series (UGI, upper GI) is recommended for early detection of stomach cancer in men and women aged 40 years or older every two years by the National Cancer Center and the Korean Gastric Cancer Association. Thank you. Uh,